but we have to start with the 9-11 thing. It's just too, it's too much for me. I don't, anyone who lived through 9-11 is recoiling in horror at what these young people are saying. They've been indoctrinated. Their minds have been twisted. They've been brainwashed. They're weak. They're weak, pathetic souls. And I, I just posted on Twitter a minute ago to, the, to their parents, you failed. You failed them, you failed us. Here's what I'm talking about, just a sampling of what's been posted. Everyone should read it. If you haven't read it yet, read it. However, be forewarned that this has left me very disillusioned and I feel the same exact way I felt when I was deconstructing Christianity. I, I will never look at life the same. I will never look at this country the same I because in the last 20 minutes, my entire viewpoint on the entire life I have believed and I have lived has changed. I need you to stop what you're doing and go read A Letter to America. It is literally the craziest thing I've read in a while. And while I can't say that I'm that surprised, I am pretty shocked. In reading the letter, I could only think of this tweet that I saw the other day. Under settler colonialism, any kind of resistance is branded as terrorist because the only acceptable violence is violence by the occupier. Reading this letter, it becomes apparent to me that the actions of 9-11 and those acts committed against the USA and its people were all just the buildup of our government failing other nations. The way this letter is going viral right now is giving me the greatest sense of relief. If you're Muslim and you've lived in the US since 9-11, you know more truth than the typical citizen. Now it's all coming to light because of Palestine. You, my voice just wants to Unbelievable. Just a, a note to the to those morons. 3,000 Americans died on 9-11. Four planes were hijacked, thanks to bin Laden and his evil plan. Children as young and two, as two and a half were murdered on board the aircraft that took the lives of innocents who just went to work that day. And remember this man, all right? Let's talk about Kevin Cosgrove. To all of you assholes now posting your fandom for Osama bin Laden. Kevin Cosgrove was 46 years old. He was in Tower 2. He called 911 seeking help as the smoke was billowing into his lungs and he knew he was about to die. He had children, he had a wife, and he was utterly helpless because of that evil terrorist who you're now praising. Since you don't look at history, I'm bringing it to you. Here's Kevin Cosgrove's 911 call. Maybe there's two of us in this office. We're not ready to die, but it's getting bad. I understand that. We can get those guys All the apparatus there. I'm trying to let them know where you are. Where's the fire, sir? Oh, it was smoke. You ain't there. 105, two power. All right, two power. We'll get to you as soon as we can. Yeah, you can stay up. The smoke's really bad, man. No, no. That's all we need. That's all we can do. We, 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 where are you? What's where you guys up to? We're getting there. We're getting there. Doesn't feel like it, man. I got young kids. I understand that, sir. We're on the way. We have everything, sir. I know you do, but it doesn't seem like it. You got, you got lots of people up here. I understand. And then you got a lot in the building, but we're in the roof up on the top. Smoke rises. It's getting really good. We're on the floor. We're in the window. And then I had to be in green hair. Can't see. Adam, I told God to blow your in from the list. Does anybody else want to try him in here? We young men, we're not ready to die. I, I think I'm all right. I called him, said I was leaving the building. I was fine, and I'm bang. Hello? Hello? We're looking at all, we're looking at financial center. Two, three of us, two broken windows. Oh, God! It's upsetting. Kevin died that day, along with 2,977 other Americans. And we have so lost the youth of this country that now, 20 years later, 
not 70, not 170. They want to look back and rewrite the history of Osama bin Laden because Palestine, because deconstructing what? Colonization? Because there's been a mind meld on college campuses that has corrupted and infected and toxified an entire generation. And now your kids and my kids are going to have to deal with these cretins who hate America because we made them, because their parents failed them, their educators failed them, corporate America continues to fail them, the media continues to fail them, and it's the fight for our lives. If you don't think this is coming to a school near you or a community near you, you haven't been paying attention. I'm so angry and I'm so grateful to Yashar Ali for monitoring the lunacy over on that platform, TikTok, because without him, we wouldn't have known this. And we've been seeing it on the streets. We've been seeing it in response to Israel. We've been seeing it last night out in front of the DNC. But this is the most stark example. Their own, their countrymen, 3,000 dead, and they're cheering the man who did it. Instead of reading his letter and realizing, I agree with him, I should reevaluate my views, they read his letter and said, right on, man, America deserved it. I don't even know what to say. Bethany? Yeah, I mean, this is exactly why Carol and I wrote Stolen Youth, because it's not just in college campuses. It's in elementary schools. It's in middle schools. It's in high schools across the country. They want to deconstruct and they want to completely break apart Western civilization. They want children and young adults to believe what those kids believe. They want to believe that America is evil and that Western civilization needs to be destroyed right down to the very foundations that like men aren't men and women aren't women and nothing is real. Um, and, you know, it, it's really scary to see that this is something that is allowed to be said, but it's not surprising at all. Like, we are 40 days past what happened in Israel. And within days, people were starting to question all of the GoPro and all of the telegraph messages that Hamas themselves produced. So if we're going to question what happened on 10-7 when there's ample video evidence, why not question what happened on 9-11 20 years ago? None of them were alive for it. And it's it's really scary because for I think a lot of people of, of my generation, I'm in my late 30s, 9-11 was a really seminal turning point moment where that opened my eyes and, and changed my entire life. And honestly, in a lot of ways, this is a weird thing to say and I'm trying not to get canceled, but in a lot of ways for the good because it made me understand what what the world was and that there was good and evil. And as a teenager, I didn't totally understand that. But when you see that take place in front of your eyes, it makes you question everything that's happened, but not in the way that they're questioning it. It made me realize that there is evil in this world that people will get on a plane and drive it into a building and they don't care about the innocent lives lost and that we have to be aware of what makes our country great and we have to promote that because if we don't, we become like them. And they're taking the lesson of 10-7 and twisting it completely in the reverse that, you know, maybe let's see the perspective of the people that raped, violently raped children, that chopped the heads off of babies. There is no perspective there. There, no. is, there is nothing admirable there's no in that point of view. Yeah, there's no context. And if you think that there's something that can be gained from, and I'm using this term very loosely, people like that, then there's something broken inside of you that is perhaps not fixable. It's sick, Carol. I mean, it's we've been seeing it. It's been right in front of our very eyes now for a long time, but in the past five weeks in particular, this sickness that is spread like the plague across our college campuses and our youth. TikTok is absolutely a part of it. You know, it's you can't deny that it's an infestation. TikTok is the... It's the thing that spreads. It's not the virus itself, but it spreads the virus. And it's, of course, controlled by the Chinese who hate us. They don't allow their kids to have social media from us. Mm -hmm. They only do this to our children. And, and I, I do not let the schools or the parents off the hook. What, this will not happen to my children. It will, right. I, I will go on record and tell you, this is not gonna happen to my children. We are inoculating them against this shit. Why aren't more parents, yeah. get off your fucking iPhone. Pay attention to your child. Look at your kids' lessons. Get out, get, step down from the women's march, which by the way, it was totally anti-Semitic and we called it out as mm -hmm. did many at the time. 
do some parenting if you're going to bother having a child and stop indoctrinating your own children to those of you who are on the left in this pernicious woke ideology because this is where it lands. I'm very fired up about it, Carol. I feel like we're totally forgetting. Yeah. We're forgetting 9-11. And it's, you know what's going to happen? It's going to happen again. Right. I, I absolutely am with you. I'm fired up about this also. The idea that my children will someday be making excuses for mass murder is one that I just can't abide by. It's such an indictment of our education system that these American kids don't realize that they're born, you know, not, I don't I don't even think third base. And they're basically born on home plate. And they've been led to believe that they live in this terrible country. I was born in the Soviet Union. I write this piece every year on my America anniversary about how grateful I am to be here, about how much I know know that my life could have been so different. I make sure that my kids understand that. And I think just the the luck that you have to have to be born in the greatest country in world history and think that you're somehow, you know, born in a bad place and and th these are the colonizers or whatever nonsense. And as if these people wouldn't slit your throats, as if these people wouldn't fly you into a building on the airplane. They just found the body of a peace activist that Hamas had murdered. They didn't care that she had stood up for them, that she had tried to make peace with the Palestinians, that she had wanted a better life for all the Palestinians. They didn't care about any of that. They murdered her anyway. So, yeah, you know, one of the things that I would also say is that as we've been traveling around uh, to promote stolen youth, I've heard from so many parents who are like, I lost my child to this ideology. And I'll say to them, like, did you did you talk about it at home? And they're like, not really. I thought, you know, I thought they went to a good school. I thought that they had good friends. I thought we lived in a good society. If you don't say it to your children, if you don't live your values and talk about your values and tell them about your beliefs, somebody else is going to fill in that information. And it might be somebody saying, hey, 9-11 wasn't that bad. And we're not going to repeat the contents of the bin Laden letter here, but suffice it to say, it's all about how terrible America is and Israel and Palestine, like he was in common cause with the Palestinians. And then it went on. I guess they missed the part about how we're doing, we're, we're living lives of debauchery over here in America. He didn't much like the fact that we had female waitresses. And so, I mean, like, the, the, was it, this is a madman. You're a bunch of dumbasses. You're either ignorant or you're crazy. I don't really care. I just don't want you to have any power. And I really don't want your voices circulated over and over and over again. Well, as autumn settles in, the Christmas decorations have already made their grand entrance. But before allowing the shopping stress to take over, take a moment to think about this. Many families are choosing to embrace experiences and family gifts instead of the frenzy of individual shopping. Now is the perfect time to order the ultimate family gift, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. A Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas combines the benefits of a hot tub with those of an exercise pool. Michael Phelps Swim Spas come in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small one. Installation can take less than a day, and since it's heated, you can use it year-round in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. Order yours today. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK to save $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.